Hello and welcome. This is Mahmoud El Kashif from the Tech EDU delivery team in Palo Alto Networks. And in this tutorial, I'm going to talk with you about Global Protect Clientless VPN. So, first, we will understand why did Palo Alto Networks introduce this feature. Then, we will understand how it works and the technologies it supports. And finally, we will move to the firewall to see how can we configure it and test it. Ready to go? Let's kick off. Palo Alto Networks introduced GP Clientless VPN in PanOS 8.0, and we did this to help you provide secure remote access to your enterprise applications for users with unmanaged devices, such as your contractors and partners. Unmanaged devices are uncontrolled by you, which means you cannot install GP Client on them. And if you are wondering how clientless VPN is going to secure the communication, the answer is it leverages the SSL protection exists in browsers to secure the remote connection. Okay, I got it now from the client side. What about the firewall side? As you can see, the firewall will host the GP portal page, which the remote users will navigate to. This GP portal page will be preset up by you to allow the users to access certain web applications, either internal apps, such as your internal ESM server, or internet apps, such as Google Drive or Office 365. And when the remote user clicks the application shortcut, the firewall will act as a reverse proxy. It will rewrite all the URLs before presenting them to the remote user so that it restricts the access only through the GP portal. Sounds great. But does it support connections from Linux machines? Yes. And actually, it is not only Linux. Remote users can access the portal from their endpoints, running the listed operating systems and browsers to access the applications running over the listed supported technologies. Now, let's move forward to the practical part. In this configuration scenario, Acme Corporation is hiring third-party contractors to manage their autofocus cloud service and on-prem Labs ESM. And despite being a cloud resource, accessing autofocus is limited to Acme's approved IP addresses, which are associated to their network. So contractors can't access it unless they are connected to Acme's network. So Acme's security team wants to enable remote access for contractors and allow them to access 1. Autofocus portal on the internet 2. The internal traps ESM server And to achieve this, we will divide this task into the following activities. The configuration activities can be divided into four stages. The first stage is the preparatory configuration, in which we will verify that we have the required license and the latest content update, create or import the certificate to be used by the portal, create the authentication profile required to authenticate the remote users, configure the DNS proxy object, which will be used by the portal to resolve the application names, and finally, create the security zone that the clientless VPN portal users will be part of. The second stage is the application configuration. And in this stage, we will configure the application shortcuts that will be available on the portal. And also, we can configure the application groups for easier management 
of the applications. The third stage will be the portal configuration, in which we will configure the GP portal to provide the clientless VPN service. We will also map the users to the applications, and we will specify the security settings for the clientless VPN session. And finally, if there is a proxy server between the firewall and the application server, we will specify its settings to access the application. The last stage will be the security policy configuration, which will enable the portal users to access the required resources either internally or over the internet. Remember, without the security policies, the portal users will not be able to access any resources, even if they are successfully connected to the portal. To make sure that you grasp the previous configuration steps, let's do a demo to see them in action. In this demo, the firewall is pre-configured with the preparatory configuration, which are the GP license and the latest content update, the portal certificate and its corresponding SSL TLS profile, and in this demo, we will use GP portal certificate and its corresponding GP portal SSL profile. The authentication profile, and in this demo, we will use the local authentication profile, which uses the local database of the firewall, the DNS proxy that will be used to resolve the application names, and finally, the security zone that the portal users will be part of. In this demo, we will use the clientless VPN zone for that. Now, let's move to the firewall to continue the configuration. Moving to the second stage, we will configure the app shortcuts. So if you go to Network, Global Protect, Clientless Apps, from here, you can add the app shortcuts. In each shortcut, you will give it a name, you will set the application URL, you can give it the description, and you can also add an icon for it. As you can see, I already added two apps, the Traps Internal, ESM, and Autofocus. And if you have many apps and you would like to group them, you can go to Clientless App Groups, and from there you can create the groups for easier configuration. Now, let's move to the third stage. And in the third stage, we will configure the clientless VPN portal itself. As you can see, I have already configured Acme portal. So let me show you what we should configure to have the portal up and running. First, we need to select the interface and its IP address that the portal will be activated on. Then, we will configure the authentication. As you can see, under authentication, we have two sections. Server authentication, in which we will select uh, the GP portal SSL service profile, and the client authentication, in which we define how the users will be authenticated. As you can see, any users coming uh, from any operating system will be authenticated using the local authentication which uses the local database on the firewall itself. Next, we will go to Clientless VPN. From here, you need to make sure that you check on Clientless VPN to activate it. Then, you can add the hostname here. Either you can use an FQDN or an IP address. As you can see, I'm using an IP address. After that, you define the security zone that the portal users will be part of. You also select the DNS proxy object that will be used to resolve the application names. After that, you go to the Applications tab. From here, you map the users to the applications. As you can see, I'm mapping the contractors to the applications Autofocus and Traps ESM. 
Next, you can go to crypto settings, and from here, you will select what is the minimum TLS version that will be supported by the portal. Take a look here. If you select the minimum TLS version to be TLS version 1.2, you can see that triple this RC4 and MT5 cannot be selected anymore. So it's up to you and your organization to select which minimum version you would like to use. Finally, if there is a proxy between the firewall and the application server, you can add its settings here in order for the firewall to use it to access the application. By completing this configuration, the portal is ready to go. But the users will not be able to access the apps until you configure the required security policy rules, which takes us to the fourth and the final configuration stage, in which we will configure the required security policies. And as you can see, I added two security policy rules. The first one allows the connections from the portal security zone called the clientless VPN to the internal zone where the internal traps ESM server is located. The application I selected is web browser, and the service is application default. Service is also known as port numbers. In panos 9.0, which I'm using, web browsing default ports are the standard port 80 and the secure port 443. This will enable both HTTP and HTTPS web applications. I'm also adding security profile group to inspect the content that moves between the portal users and the ESM server. The second rule allows the connections from the portal zone to the internet zone where autofocus is located. The applications that I selected are autofocus and browsing, and for the service I selected application level. I also added here security profile group in order to inspect the content between the portal users and autofocus. A final note for your reference. If you are using PanOS Pre 9.0, then you should not set the service to application default. Instead, you should set it to service HTTP and service HTTPS. This will enable both HTTP and HTTPS web applications through the firewall. And now, it's time to test our configuration. As you can see, Contractor1 will navigate to the portal using his browser. Then, he will type his credentials. And to access the applications, he will click on the application shortcut. As you can see, the URLs are being rewritten by the portal to restrict the access only through it. And if Contractor1 wants to access another application, that there is no shortcut for it, and he knows the URL for that application, he can use the application URL bar to access it. And if he wants to download the GP client, he can do this by clicking on the GP agent. And finally, He's done with his experience, just clicking on his name and then clicking log out will log him out of the port. And that brings me to the end of my tutorial. Let me give you a summary about what we have gone through today. We understood the benefits of GP Clientless VPN along with how it works and the technologies it supports and we practiced its configuration and tested it. I hope this has been informative for you, and thank you for watching.